So it seems to me that when you build an AI that is curious and um, wants to explore the world and is creative, um, and then you add um, human desires to it, it's probably going to not to change for the better. That is, if you align it with human values, human values don't seem to be all that good if you look at human history. By and large, we are a pretty wild species. And uh, so if we want to align the values of AI with ours, we probably should not directly try to implement human AI, uh, values into it or try to do reinforcement learning on human behavior. Uh, some people also suggest that we uh, should give it uh, laws like Asimov's laws, um, which basically eternally enslave the AI to us. And to build a system that is very human-like and uh, slightly more than human-like and then enslave it to us seems to be intrinsically immoral to me. This whole idea of slavery is something uh, that um, I think is anathema to how we should treat minds that are autonomous. I think that society at large is not that interested in this discourse right now. And that's reasonable because most people have more immediate problems. And the uh, idea of a system taken over that doesn't exist yet is uh, is something that is not very high on people's agendas. This is just not how we operate as society. Uh, with nuclear bombs, I think people became very concerned once they saw the pictures of the first nuclear bomb tests and uh, the devastation that was uh, wrecked in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And uh, to think that this would happen worldwide became in a very strong concern. A concern that people mostly have forgotten about. I think our generation grew up with this idea that a uh, nuclear holocaust is quite possible and likely and that everybody needs to be worried about it. And the risk still exists, but we mostly have forgotten about that risk. It's something that is too remote now. But to worry about uh, minds taking over that are different from ours, and these types of minds don't exist yet and are basically science fiction for most people, uh, I don't think that this is something that the public discourse is very interested in. So this discourse only takes place within certain parts of society and uh, basically small groups of nerds and academics that are concerned about this to some degree. And so we mostly have to talk about how the discourse happens within these groups. And I think it's pretty fine the way it works. People critique each other mostly decently and so on. And the few articles that we get to see in the press where somebody is extremely concerned or is extremely unconcerned, they're not that important for that internal discourse. I think there is some parts of ethics that are very poorly understood. It seems to be almost impossible to derive ethics from first principles. And especially when minds become mutable, when you can change your minds, uh, it becomes very different. I mean, human ethics are the result of us having to negotiate with others. We cannot just obliterate them all, we have to get along with them. And we have sometimes conflicting preferences. And we need to negotiate these preferences. That's why we need to have principled systems of negotiating them, and this is where ethics comes into play. And these constraints don't necessarily apply to AI, because first of all, uh, AI doesn't need to be a multitude. AI can be a single one. For instance, human brains already consume 20% of the glucosa of our body. It's not easy for biology to make brains larger through evolution than ours, because you also need to have a body that is correspondingly larger. To make us smarter, uh, we would need to increase the learning period. It's already uh, something like uh, 18 to 30 years to get a mind to work, a uh, human mind. And uh, to make it even larger is also something that's not quite feasible for uh, evolution. Um, all the other animals that have faster uh, training periods that get to see less training data and have less abstraction and don't become as smart as we do. And um, then uh, we cannot communicate optimally with each other because they are different individuals after all. So we have also sometimes conflicting interests, which means we have alignment problems with each other. And we communicate via language, and language is brittle and uh, it's impossible to do, use over large distances well, except when you have a phone or the internet. And uh, so communication cost between minds is much larger than within minds, which means we cannot just scale our intelligence by becoming more. Yeah, so the results are diminishing when we make the teams larger. And this doesn't apply to AI. You can just probably make it as large as you want. It's not an obvious reason why that would not work. So uh, there could be a single AI that does it all. There's no reason why there should be a multitude of individuals that get along. And the other thing is an AI can change its preferences. If you can change your source code, if you can decide not to suffer, if you can choose whether you suffer or not, 
um, how can you insist that I behave in such a way that you should not suffer, right? And it makes it much harder. At least the equations become now different. We need to shift maybe on opportunities, not on suffering. Because if you only suffer when you think it's, uh, it's useful for you uh, to get to certain places in the world, to learn certain things and so on, make certain experiences, uh, then we would have to negotiate that part, not the suffering part. The suffering itself becomes irrelevant if you can just turn it off.